Pokemon Legends Arceus released last Friday on Nintendo Switch, promising a grand open-world Pokemon adventure with a new twist on the age-old Pokemon formula. Did the game deliver? Let's find out in this 89 Games Review. The game begins as we are transported to the Hisui region in the ancient past by a mysterious figure. We crash land on a beach where we meet Professor Laventon and learn to catch some Pokemon. The game does a good job of introducing its mechanics in an easy to digest format before releasing you into the larger world. Speaking of the larger world, Pokemon Legends Arceus lands just shy of a truly open world, opting instead for large zones where you have the freedom to go in any direction and explore. The zones do give you that open world feel where a new discovery or Pokemon could be just around the corner. New zones are inaccessible until you reach certain milestones in the main story, as well as a high enough star rank in the Survey Corps. The Survey Corps is one of the three branches of the Galaxy Team, the lot you find yourself assisting in the Hisui region. Your job on the Survey Team is to build the Pokedex by catching, training, and battling every Pokemon you can find. By adding to the Pokedex, you advance your star rank, which is this game's version of gym badges. Higher ranks allow access to new zones, allow you to use new items, and allow you to train higher level Pokemon. Building up the Pokedex is also your main source of money in-game, as you get paid every time you add something new. The other mode of progression is the story missions. Story missions generally have you tracking down Wardens and their noble Pokemon to assist the Diamond and Pearl clans, the other two factions in the game, in calming their frenzied noble Pokemon. Wardens will act similar to gym leaders, challenging you to a Pokemon battle to see if you are strong enough to battle the frenzied nobles. Defeating the noble Pokemon in each region will open up the next area of the game, so long as your star rank is also high enough. Now that we've got an idea of what's going on in the world, what about the gameplay? I'll break down the gameplay into three sections. Exploration, Catching Pokemon, and Pokemon Battles. Starting with Exploration, there is plenty to keep us busy just exploring the world. While most necessary items will be available for purchase in Jubilife Village, our main source of items will be crafting them ourselves for materials spread throughout the world. We can use our Pokemon to gather materials by simply throwing out their Pokeball next to the materials. I found this mechanic to be a fun twist on the normal harvesting methods of other games, and it is also quick, allowing us to throw out our Pokemon and keep running while they grab the materials. No waiting for an annoying 5 second animation while we whip out a pickaxe and bang on some rocks. The crafting is also very user friendly, and most items only take two or three materials to craft. In the early game, I had an overabundance of potions and Pokeballs as I would grab every material I came across. New recipes become available as we build the Pokedex and gain higher ranks in the Survey Corps. Exploring the map will also bring us into contact with hundreds of different Pokemon. Each area has a good variety of Pokemon to find and can keep you busy for hours trying to catch every one in the area. Pokemon from multiple generations are here, with a total of over 230 Pokemon to find. Occasionally while exploring the wilds, you will come across Alpha Pokemon, who are larger, more dangerous versions of their species. Early in the game, these Pokemon can be extremely dangerous as they are high level and will attack you directly. Later in the game, however, I found myself hunting these high level Pokemon down to battle and catch them. This was a lot of fun and presented a good challenge as well. Eventually, you will gain the ability to call certain Pokemon to be mounts for you and allow you to traverse the world much faster. They will also sometimes allow you to access new areas. Running through the regions on these mounts is certainly fun, but it is also a good idea to still explore on foot as you can miss crafting materials and Pokemon if you just zoom through every area. Finding and catching Pokemon, in my opinion, is by far the best part of this game. The mechanics for capturing new Pokemon are done very well, and tracking down Pokemon in the wild feels natural. Most Pokemon can be caught with a little bit of strategy and careful planning without having to engage them in battle. To catch a Pokemon, you select the Pokeball you want to use and then press the right trigger to aim it and release the trigger to throw the ball. The farther away you are from the Pokemon, the harder it is to hit them. This gives you some risk and reward in the, that do you get closer to make sure you hit them, but risk getting spotted, or do you throw from far away and hope for the best? Getting spotted will make it impossible to catch the Pokemon without going into battle with them or stunning them. The environment can be used to your advantage as well. If you crouch down in the tall grass, you can stay hidden and sneak up on Pokemon much easier. 
Throwing out berries and other foods can distract the Pokemon, giving you a better success rate on capturing them. You can even throw balls of mud or shells at them to stun them, which is kind of hilarious. I can't tell you how many times I caught a Pokemon by throwing out a berry so they would turn their back to me and then launch my Pokeball from my spot in the tall grass right at their back. Finally, there is the tried and true method of battling a Pokemon to weaken it and then capturing it with your Pokeball. But that was usually my fallback as trying to catch them without a battle was so much more fun. There are so many different strategies that make capturing Pokemon a great experience. The Pokemon battles in this game is where I ran into my first issues with the game. While battling still requires strategy and matching up the right Pokemon types against your opponent's types, I found that most battles were won because I carried six Pokemon compared to my opponent's one or two. The damage that attacks do, even when they aren't type advantage, just seemed like too much. I didn't have an opportunity to adjust my strategy. One attack and my first Pokemon would go down, even when on comparable level with the opponent. Then I would bring out a Pokemon with type advantage over my opponent and take them out with one hit. Battles were very short. Pokemon Legends Arceus stayed with the easier battle systems of recent games. Maybe it's just me, but I remember playing Gen 1, 2, and 3, and the battles seemed to take longer and involve a lot more strategy. I missed that in the newer Pokemon games. I didn't meet a real challenge from trainer battles in this game until I reached the end of the main story, and even then I only had to grind for about an hour before I was able to go back and easily defeat my opponent. If you spend much time at all training up your team or capturing alpha Pokemon, you won't have much of a challenge from trainer battles. The focus on this game is definitely on the catching Pokemon side of things. That said, the battles with the frenzied noble Pokemon were a welcome challenge. Battling them requires you to throw bombs at them just like throwing Pokeballs. Every hit will take down their frenzy bar a little, and occasionally they will become stunned, allowing you to throw out a Pokemon and battle them. Upon winning the battle, the noble will be stunned for several seconds, allowing you to get in several free shots with your bombs. While trying to hit the noble Pokemon with bombs, you will also have to dodge its attacks. If you take too many hits, you will black out and have to try again. This mechanic of the Pokemon attacking directly carries over into the rest of the game as well. Some Pokemon in the world are aggressive and will attack you if they spot you. Blacking out in the field will lose you some of your items, which can set you back, especially when you lose Pokeballs or rare items. Overall, even with the lackluster battling, the catching mechanics, exploration, and crafting in the game are done well and make up for it. I give gameplay an 8 out of 10. Moving on to the graphics, the Pokemon are all done very well and have crisp, bright models, but the environment, main character, and NPCs are just okay. Don't expect Breath of the Wild level graphics here. Nothing is going to blow you away, but nothing is game-breaking either. On the other hand, I never experienced any stutter in the game, and it ran smoothly overall, even when multiple Pokemon and effects were on the screen at one time. Focus here was definitely on the gameplay. Graphics gets a 7 out of 10. Now on to sound. The sound team did an excellent job of delivering the music and sound effects for the game. From soothing adventurous music in the fields, to mysterious or spooky music at night, to exciting battle themes, the sound design was spot on in every scenario. Never did I find myself in a situation where the music got repetitive and grating or didn't fit the situation I found myself in. Sometimes out in the fields, the music would just end for a while and you could take in the ambience of the area you were in. All in all, music scores a 9 out of 10. Pokemon Legends Arceus has done a good job of putting a new spin on the traditional Pokemon formula. With a progression system not dependent on battling your way to the top and instead focusing more on exploration and catching Pokemon for progression. It also still includes all the aspects that Pokemon veterans will appreciate making the game recognizable as a Pokemon game, even if it isn't in the main line of Pokemon games. For someone like me who hasn't really played Pokemon since Gen 3 and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Pokemon Legends Arceus was different enough to drag me in and keep me playing for over 25 hours, and I plan on putting many more into it. For any fan of Pokemon, I would say this is a must-play, and even if you haven't played a Pokemon game before, this is a good game in its own right and worth checking out. Pokemon Legends Arceus gets an overall 89 game score of 8 out of 10. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, please consider subscribing and press that like button so I can do more reviews in the future. Thanks, and keep on gaming.